it until I played it. Well, we use it in the finals, but anyways, let's get this started. Five, four, three. What's up, guys? I am Goose. I am joined by Ling Boy, my guest caster. Hola. I'm here casting the Infinity B Team Open. This is the semifinal match. Um, I, I already forgot who's up one. This is game two between Ekrian and Starkiller. Um, who's up? Who's up one? Who's winning the game? Who's, who's? Uh, Starkiller. Starkiller is up one. Ekrian is our Red Zerg in the bottom left and in the bottom right. Starkiller, our blue Terran. I think you can pick it, Lex. That's that's oh, what man. uh it's that's what it says in the uh dealio. I just have to say that was pretty sick. Um his drone split, he, he literally clicked on each individual drone and sent them to a mineral line. Like really fast so he didn't waste any time. You can use F one to do that just so you're if you for those of you that don't know. Uh yeah, Lex you wanna check up on that? Cool. I, I really don't I really don't mind them playing on this map, but you can if you'll go to the uh, tournament site and look. Rogue says you yeah. can, but just please check. Anyways, um, the, the semifinals should be on Ohana. Well, this is game two. So, oh, okay. so it was oh, a pick. Case, yeah. So yeah, okay. Then, then we're fine. Sorry guys, we're we're trying to sort out our own event. How sad is that? Anyways, you guys can hit us up at infgaming.net. You can check out the stream if you're not already watching twitch.tv/infgaming. My personal stream twitch.tv/goosesc2. Check out the forums. There they are, infgaming.net, as provided by Lingboy. You can talk to us, leave us yeah. messages, hit us up for clan wars, find information about tournaments, um, come play with us, join us for practices, try out for the A team, the B team. There's there's just endless possibilities. Everyone is welcome. We're an open community. If you are watching this on YouTube, or if you are not, if you are playing and you want to find this game and you have been casted, or if you haven't casted in the past, there is the YouTube channel. Lex is all over it. I'm going to invite him to all my future casts because of that shit right there. Beautiful. YouTube.com slash INFGaming2012 is where we post all these VODs. It usually takes us a day or two. just kind of depends on how our schedules work out. But we do try to get up everything we cast, everything we play, and anything that we find is important. Check out our different teams. If you guys are into other games and you just happen to come across this because it was entertaining or or uh, something fun, or if you play something else, we do have League of Legends teams and we have a top-ranked Dota 2 team led by our good friend Torch. They are playing in the Alienware Gaming Tournament currently, and I believe they are in 13th at the last update. They were in second, but Torch is on vacation. But if you guys want to support him, you can watch. He streams often on this very same channel, twitch.tv slash INF Gaming. You can watch him play. They stream all their games and all the events, and uh, they're actually really, really, really good, as you can imagine, being one of the top-ranked teams. Yeah. So back to the boring stuff. Is uh, since the boring stuff is over, we do have pool first out of Acrian, followed by Hatch, uh, Gateway, or Gateway. See, it's not even a Gateway. Racks. Wait, was that factory was that pool first? It had to be pool first because the hatch was the, the pool was done before the hatch. Oh, okay, yeah. So I believe it was a 14-15 pool. I'm not going to go back because, well, I can't. Anyways, to talk about the map a little bit, since both these players are doing relatively standard stuff, we have double gas out of the Terran. GSL Whirlwind is ginormous. It is the largest map, I believe, available online currently. If I'm mistaken, somebody prove me wrong, and if you prove me wrong, I hate you forever. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's the largest map. It has a nicely large main base. I know that doesn't matter for a lot of people, but if you're placing buildings, tech structures, you can hide things, do drops if you're tearing. The uh, ramp down into your nat, your nat is very nice, well protected, there's a neutral supply depot. There's a lot you can do. The tricky part is your third, and I see the Zergi buddy is dropping down his third, up in the top left, away from his Terran opponent. So you're gonna have this ramp here, and this ramp to defend. So if you place your army here, you can kinda defend this. The problem is with so many pathways in here to sweep around, you can get up this ramp and put pressure on the third. The other option for your third is this one, which some people argue is technically closer. I don't think so because you can see the gaps there. But you can get right in there, but there's another backdoor, quote unquote, front door ramp to get into the third. So one way or another, you're going to have two ramps, so it makes your third hard to defend, although the distances between bases makes this a very heavy, heavy macro map. Uh, we do have the Terran player open up Hellion Banshee. This is very standard TVP, but it can be very exciting. T 
TVP. TVZ. So this is not yet scouted by Acrian, who is putting up his third. And this can be dangerous, especially on a map where there's so much room. I mean, Zergling speed is going to be huge, where you're going to be able to get across the map really, really quickly. So Zergling speed is done. And it's those long rush distances that make a difference when speed matters because it takes Terran X amount of time to run all the way over there, but the lings are going to be faster and be able to catch oh, up. Oh, he spots the Banshees. And he oh, does yeah. spot the Banshees. So hopefully we'll see some quick... Got some Queens there. He does not have an Evo Chamber. Evo Chamber He's is up, so he it. needs to get that... He needs to get those spores, and there they started. So he should be able to deflect this. Uh, cloak is not yet done. Probably very soon. Uh, it's about half done. I don't know why I don't just look at the production tab because I'm in the wrong tab. Hey, sorry guys. So he's gonna be able to bat this away. You need to put spores at his natural and his third. The natural, the third has been scouted by the Terran. Although Ekrin's not doing much over there, kind of just forced that Banshee back. He is ahead in the supply count, which is to be expected. Got a decent little wall started at the front of his base here. Overload spread's pretty good. Oh, I'm sorry, Zergling spread's pretty good. Overload spread not so good. Does have that spore up. Banshee's gonna go ahead and work his way around. Hickory needs a spore at his third just to protect that. Got a couple going down on his gnat. Glad he's not over investing in spores. He's not killing himself on it. <laughs> Kinda chased away from the watchtower there. I've Zerg. done that a few times. I've like, <coughs> built like six spores in each base because you're just like so scared of the banshees. So here's the move out. The Hellions are revealed to the Zergling. So Hellion Banshee, very standard from Terran. This is to be expected. He's getting roaches, so that's good. Roaches on the way. More Banshees. Engineering Bay. Doing a good job, and this is what's gonna. This is what is gonna save you in this. The creep spread is what's gonna save you in these in these matches. This queen might drop. Needs to transfuse. Transfuse. Oh, it loses oh. that first queen. Second queen coming down the ramp. The banshee's forced to be pushed back. There's no spine crawlers. Bringing that third queen down. That's where that creep spread comes into play. Gonna lose a lot of these drones. Gonna get roasted by these hellions. Kind of ignoring the Banshee, which is the right thing to do, because it's not really doing too much damage. The economic damage is here. There's the Roaches. Need to quickly engage, but they're rallied out. Gonna lose some of those drones in the main base. Kind of misclicks to pull them. Needs to clean that up. Spore Crawler, nicely job. Moving the Spore Crawler. Sorry I didn't catch that, guys. Picking off that Banshee. Gonna go ahead and clean the rest of these up. And let's see how we're looking here on the drone count. We are 31 drones to 27, and these roaches are going to be able to pick off the rest of these hellions, hopefully without too much more damage. There it is. Units lost tab. About even, especially since he traded all those banshees out and those hellions. So we're sitting okay, and the zerg should be able to amp up his production, amp up his drones quite a bit. Ekrin's going to move out, unfortunately the wrong way, and missing these hellions. Parked up on the ramp there. Um, I'm just uh, putting it out there. Adrian's third is not rallied. Okay, there we go. He just fixed it. He's also floating a lot of cash. I, I blame some of that to the harass. Um, he was he getting the macro hatch up? He he was at one point. I His thought. lair is pretty late. His lair is late. Everything is going to be delayed because of that harassment. Mm -hmm. Um, which is okay. Kill? So Banshee's going to force these roaches back, uh, or not, or he's just going to ignore it. Fine as well, well. Not the best he move. He's, he's, I think he thinks he's more behind than he actually is. Gonna go ahead and do some damage to the ground here. There comes the Lings after the bunker's taken down. Wow, yeah, we might be able to do something with this. Yeah. Cleaning up that up. Roach is just tanking all the damage. Banshees. Banshees are doing significant damage. I think Adrian still thinks he's further behind than he is. Oh, sniping that armor would be awesome. Yeah, no, no, stop, stop. So Acrian is being revealed that it's full mech, as most Terrans do. I'm gonna go ahead and scout the main base. Sees everything he needs to see to know that this is this is a lot of factories. That's gonna give it away immediately. I mean, obviously the Hellion and Banshee, but some people do transfer out of that. Those factories are the confirmation that he is indeed going full mech. It's just a matter of what his final composition is going to be. A couple banshees, 
couple Hellions. Probably see some tanks. Maybe Thor Armory could t key off the Thor play. Yep. He's yeah, Thor. three Thors in production. Four Thors in three Thors in production. So double Hellion, Banshee, triple Thor, two base. Terran is broken. Our Zuggy buddy's floating a lot of minerals. He he needs to stay back defensively. I'm not sure why he's pushing out again. It's not gonna yeah, be able to do too much. Yeah, he should not be pushing out without anti air. And I hope that this drone is doing what I think it should be doing. The first thing you do when you see mech is expand everywhere. Put those expansions so far apart that there's no way the mech army can get to it. And it looks like he's going. I would drop one here. Drop one there. There's one in the corner. Put one in that corner. Frick, put one there. Who cares? There's nothing. A Terran cannot be in more than one place at the same time. Not with this. Not with this very slow, very, very strong, very unagile mech army. And there goes two expansions. Going to help him spend some of that money. And his fire's done, so he might have just been saving up for the mutalisks. He doesn't have Possible. a whole lot of gas. Uh, no he needs to production. saturate his uh, six, ga six gas geyser at his uh, third. He's also and missing some saturation at his main base. Yeah. And his natural too. So Roach is getting, getting murdered. Man, getting three shots up on all these roaches. That really hurts. 13 kills. 11 kills. Wow, seven kills. so effective, Banshees. They basically paid for themselves. I have already easily paid for themselves. I mean, that, that's that's the kind of stuff that you this. Let me tell you right now, if you're a Terran player, this is how you want to engage. You want units that shoot down to shoot against units that can't shoot up. That's that's how you win games. Simple, simple as that, guys. <laughs> so here's here's a bunch of Thors. You want you want you want hard counters. That's how you win. Hard, hard, hard counters. So these stores okay. are going to be able to focus down these these uh, corruptors. And he does get a money scan right there. He knows exactly what his opponent has. Um, I honestly think he's getting corruptors. Well, I guess he's getting them for the banshees, but I mean, he could get mutilists. Needs that overseer though. There it is coming in. Unfortunately, these stores are going to do so much splash damage to this air composition that these. These are going to be virtually useless. Thor's will clean up oh. the air. Does he have the strike cannon upgrade? Not yet. Okay. He's going to get free shots on at least SCVs. Need to be back and repairing. Repair! 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 So the goal for the Thor's is to clean up the Corruptors so the Banshees can free shot all these Roaches at no cost. He's losing two, three Thor's. Thor's are pretty cost effective against Roaches. Especially in small numbers, gonna get some free volleys off there. You gotta lose these banshees, and that's really what's gonna screw Starkiller over. I'm trying to snipe down that overseer, and the corruptors do get to survive after that. His hive is not started. He needs to start that hive now. Thor's also very good against corruptors. Just like those banshees are good against roaches. For some reason, corruptors cannot shoot Thor's. They're so damn tall, too. Well, but the Thor's do take a while to kill the corruptors if the corruptors are spread out. Definitely, definitely. Shoot some overlords here. Starkiller does need to reinforce this. He does have a small crew coming. Oh, nice corruption. Nice corruption on all these stores. Like Needs to repair that one. That. Oh, he's going to lose it. He's going to lose all these. Doing a nice job focus firing the right doors. Repair is going to clean up this most of this. Third door on the way. He's going to focus the last, last one down. Finish up the one little Hellion. Gets all those SCV kills. Clean up this last Thor. Very nice focus firing. And look at this. Picking off Thors with reinforced Zerglings. I'm not sure if that was intentional or a miss rally. But slowing them down. Cutting off reinforcements. Terran is still on two base. And this is not how you want to play as mech. You do not want to mech on two base. If you're a mecking Terran, throw down command centers. Pretend you're Zerg. Throw them everywhere. Your army is so powerful and so defense oriented, you might as well sit back, macro up, make a shit ton of bases. Whereas Akron is sitting on nearly six bases. Does he have a macro? He does have that macro hatch. So one, two, three, four, five, six bases if you count the macro hatch. It's not exactly a mining base, but it does help production. He does have a ton of money behind this. He's almost remaxed. And our Terran buddy's stuck at 54 supply, and most of that is probably just SCVs. And confirm that here. 40 SCVs, only three Hellions, two Siege Tanks, and the Raven, which is 
utterly useless at this point. Uh, um, he needs to get his, uh, forge, uh, basic gas geysers, uh, mining, and his natural, that one geyser. I think it's going to be pretty irrelevant here as the PPD is going to be able to shoot down a lot of the shots from the Corruptors. But he's doing tons of damage. He's going to force mining to stop. If he kills this base, he's going to set back Starkiller so much. There's not really a lot he can do on one base production, especially when he's almost as mined out as he is. He's down to like six mineral patches and they only have like a few hundred apiece. Now lifting off at this point is almost useless. The Roaches are stopping the lands. Uh, Corruptor's taking three shots at the factories. I wouldn't be surprised to see a GG here really, really, really soon. Starkiller a little late on that CC production. Pulling the SCVs, there's just not enough. And Acrian is going to be able to stream in tons of units. Good game, well played from Starkiller. And we move on to game three? Uh -huh. I believe they are 1 1 now. Yep. GG. Very well played. Yeah, I was really impressed by Acrian's play right there.